This is a day-level slicer built in Power BI using no custom visuals, only native features, and no crazy hacks. It's really easy to set up, as you will see in this video. Now, a slicer like this can be super helpful if you want your users to focus on just a single day or a small date range. Now, let's see how to set this up step by step. Slicers come in all shapes and forms. We have list slicers, we have drop-down slicers, we have timelines, and all of these slicers have their own use cases, just like the one that we're going to build today. Now, I would use a slicer like this if I want my users to focus on just a single day or just a few days around, well, today. All right, so in our example, we're going to set it up with a time period of seven days. So where do we start? We start with a button slicer. So let's go over here. And there we have the button slicer. And I'm going to put it here in the middle of my page. Now on the slicer, we're going to take the date field from our calendar table. So let's click here on add data, go to the calendar table from here, dim date, and pick the date field. Okay, so now we have a long list of all of the dates that are inside of my calendar table but I want to restrict it to just seven days. So for this, we can use a visual level filter. And we're going to do this with a measure that I've already set up over here. And this calculation returns a one if the date falls within a certain time period that you define here, which I set up as today plus and minus three. So seven days in total, I wanna show on my slicer. Now, if you then go back to your visual, you select it, open up the filter pane, and then you can just drag and drop that measure over here for filters on this visual. Now, you only want those dates where the measure returns a one. So those dates that fall within our selected period. So I'm going to say is equal to one apply filter. And now we just have seven buttons left. All right, so that is already working. Now I want to have these buttons nicely lined up next to one another. So let me close the filter pane, go to the formatting options, and over here, the title we don't need. Then we can go to layout, and here we can select single row. Now, at the moment, only three buttons show, but I want to have seven buttons next to one another. So max buttons to show seven perfect now probably we have to resize it then a little bit for all of the dates to show and that's it and now we have to make it a little bit prettier so i'm gonna go here to call out values there we can add a label and these labels are going to return the day of the month and i know that you're thinking yeah but there is already the date um but i want to split the month name from the number so I'm going to open up the formatting options for label and there we can use again a measure. So I wrote another measure. Let's go over here to the data pane, day of month label. And this measure simply returns the day of the month using the selected value function. And in the date table, I have a day of month column and it checks if the date is equal to today, because then it also adds that little symbol there behind it as an indicator that that is the date of today. That's it. Now, this measure we can then use for our label. So I'm going to go back to the formatting options, call out values, label, and here that is where we can use a measure, day of month label. Perfect. So that is working. And for today, we have a little dot there behind the number. Now, let's go back because I want that number to be above the value, just like this. And I also want it to be bigger, for example, 18. And we can also make it stand out more, for example, by making it bold. All right, so just play around until you're happy. Okay, now, what about the actual date that shows below it? Well, I don't want to show the full date, so I go to values. And then for display units, we change that to custom. Now, setting that to custom allows us to use custom formatting strings to set the formatting of the date. And we can then play around with the number of Ds, Ms, and Ys. Now, here, I just want to show the abbreviated month name. Well, then we can just put in three amps. And mm, that looks weird because these amps should be capitalized. All right, that's better. Now, the next thing that I want to do is make it a little bit less bold. So I'm going to make it a little bit lighter, just like this. We can also make it smaller and we can also change the font type, maybe from then to Sugui. Now, also important with slices, of course, is to see how does everything look like if we make a selection. So if I select today, then what well, we get a black filling, which is well, OK, but maybe we want to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go over here to buttons, 
fill and then here we have the fill color for the selected state so i click on it and either i choose here light gray or make this a little bit more transparent i don't want to have a border so that one i turn off and we can do the same for the default state also there i don't want to have a border i turn it off now as a next step i want these call out values and labels to show at the top and i want to have them centered in the middle so here for the default state i go to layout make sure that we have here top for alignment and then i can go to values and from here we can choose the horizontal alignment which then also gets applied for the labels perfect now also important for slicers is to check how does it actually look like when we make a selection so when we click on a certain date well then we have a black background which is eh, okay but it doesn't look amazing just yet so to make this a little bit more special what we're going to do is we're going to well, create our own frame for the buttons now let me show you what i mean i'm going to go here to the formatting options for the slicer click on buttons and here we have fill and there we can use a background image now i have already a certain background image set up for the default state of a state and the selected state so let me select those images here's the one for the default state and nothing happens because we have to set the image fit to fit and now it looks kind of ugly and that is because well we still have the normal button frame around it and we probably also have to resize it a little bit so i'm going to first of all get rid of the original borders already a little bit better and then i'm going to resize it meaning i'm going to make it less wide just like this and i'm going to stretch it a little bit more then i'm going to go back here to call out values to make my values a little bit smaller and the labels also a bit smaller now that looks already a little bit better but that's this black fill color that looks a little bit off right now that is because we still have for the buttons a fill for the selected state which is black now here i also want to use an image so i'm going to get rid of that default image then click on browse and choose the selected frame that i created also as a picture that i'm using as the background for the buttons and also here it's important that we set it to fit now that is nice but that black fill color didn't disappear it did not replace it because the picture and the fill color they work hand in hand so what we can do is first of all make that a little bit more transparent the fill color just like this or choose a light gray whatever you prefer and then to get rid of these edges well we have to go to shape change the shape to a rounded rectangle and then play around with the rounding of the corners until everything nicely fits in. Now, perfect we're almost there now we just have to do it also for the hover state so also there i want to have an image that i already set up and that is this one and also here set it to fit and you see we have now a nice hover effect as well now that is working but now we have to refine it a little bit further because there for the selected state that doesn't look amazing yet so i go here to call out values and then here for the selected state we can choose a different color for the values maybe that same gray as uh, what i have over there which is this one and then we can go to the label where we can make it pop a little bit more i'm going to choose that same purple which is this color over here and maybe instead of gray let's make that light gray for the selected value also purple and then of course you can still tweak it a bit further and you can say whether it should be single select or not and so here under formatting options slice the settings and also and we can add some extra information using the title right so over here we can say select date and then let's go for segui put it in the middle and maybe we also want to have a subtitle and there i want to say actual date okay and then maybe let's make this one cursive let's stretch our slice a little bit so that everything nicely fits boom that's it so you see with just a few steps you have a really nice looking slicer that for some reports really makes sense if you really want to focus on a single date or just a few days in a certain time frame now, if you're wondering how did he create those shapes for the buttons these images that we use for the uh, fill background well for that i just use powerpoint so you see nothing else there around the rectangle i grouped those together right click and then save as back this picture svg png and then you can use that for your power bi slides
Now, as promised, you see, no custom visuals, no crazy hacks, relatively easy to set up. Now, let me know, do you like this trick? Is it something that you would use? Put it in the comment section below. If you want to learn more tips and tricks around Power BI, check out these two videos. And if you want to learn how to build really good Power BI reports from beginning to end, reports that actually make sense in real life, then check out my design transformation program over here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.